In today's video, we're going underneath the crawl space to figure out how these rats are getting in. And what's cool about it, our customer created a really cool gadget to do a really neat inspection underneath the crawl space, and we're gonna bring that on a ride with us. And we're about to do that right now. All right, guys, so we get this call from Ivor, our client, who has been dealing with a rodent issue. He hired another rodent company. They did a great job by covering all of the entry points on the exterior portion of the house. But what they can't figure out is why the rats and how the rats are getting in the crawl space. And he found us on YouTube, and after he's exhausted all efforts, he went to the degree of getting a remote control vehicle hooking up a camera and an LD flashlight on top of it because he's deathly scared of crawling underneath the crawl space. So I thought it was brilliant for him to rig something like this to do his own inspection. And we're going to take this bad baby with us. I, I want to really see how it works. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, exactly. The other thing he created, guys, he took a ring camera with a tripod, put it on a crawl space, um, placed it on a crawl space access vent and literally got footage of a rat in front so we're going to show you that footage as well so let's go meet the brain behind this his name is ivar and we're about to meet him right now hey ivar we we're just showing uh, our viewers your amazing genius remote control car so what moment did it take for you to create or uh, decide to go, hey, I, I gotta, I'm gonna I'm gonna come up something. with something well, here. It's kind of, I'm, I was kind of trying to study the habits of the rats. I mean, I already knew they were under the house. I've already trapped two of them and taken, taken them out from the crawl space. I trapped a couple in the attic. I was interested in knowing why they were getting under the house, not so much as how, although I still don't know that. I assume they're coming through the sewers. Right. But what I was doing was going onto YouTube late at night and watching rat videos so I could try and understand, you know, how to catch them, how to drive them away, what motivates them, and that's where I saw your video. And the reason that I hired you guys is you can hire a plumber to fix an issue, you can hire an exterminator to try and get rid of the rats, but you cannot hire a company that does both of these things. Awesome. And that's where you guys come in. There was another gadget that you created as well with the ring camera. That's pretty brilliant. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. So this is the... Uh, the ring camera that you created here? Yeah, I just bought a ring camera, stuck it on a tripod, and aimed it at one of those vents and just sat back and, and waited. And, and what did the footage show? It showed a rat coming right up to the vents, and you stick around having a look and then run back. Oh. You actually see the tail going by, the whole thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this is, this is genius. So, for, for any viewers out there to get creative, if you wanna monitor, and kind of figure out the migration of these rats. I mean, I think he's come up with some really good affordable ways to really determine. And if you can get that footage, it can help companies like ourselves to really figure out and maybe zone in on areas where they're, they're uh, right. entering. Their runway is, yep. Exactly. Well, I think we're gonna begin with the smoke test and then we're gonna get underneath the camera and we'll bring, uh, what should we name that little remote control car? Mars Rover too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you can see that uh, there's been some rat traps placed around the outside perimeter of the home. They're not biting that. And the reason why these traps aren't working or not effective is because there's plenty of food source outside of these traps here. So they're outsmarting these, these traps. Um, and look at, here's another one that he's placed. And again, for a couple of weeks now, no activity whatsoever. So my point is, is that if the food source is elsewhere, these traps aren't going to work. The only way these traps are going to be effective is if you do your exclusions really well and trap them inside, then they get desperate, they need food, and boom, that's when the trapping really starts to be effective. So I just wanted to cue you in on that. So now what we're gonna do is go up on the roof, get our smoke testing done, and start crawling underneath that crawl space to see if we can find any breaches in the sewer system. How are we doing, Jim? Good. We're just, uh, we're running the camera here. Um, 
So we're down the main sewer line here, which is... Uh, Ooh, stop, stop, bring it back. Ooh, check this out. See right here, guys? You can see some toilet paper right here clogging up on a massive root ball. Keep going. Right there. Look at that right there. It looks, almost looks like a rat's nest, but it's, <laughs> it's roots. So that's right, see this big tree, guys? This, that sewer line runs right here underneath this massive, massive tree. So what's happening is that sewer line, there's a connection there that's starting to have a breach there and the roots are getting in between. Sometimes those holes are big enough, those rats, those sewer rats can come in from the city sewer and in. So this could be the case, but we're gonna run a smoke test and, uh, and see what we can do to identify this. Ooh. Look at the look maggots. At the, maggot. the maggots and the flies are already starting to, look at this. See the movement here? The infestation of flies and maggots. Give one day and it, it may just literally just collapse on you. And at that point, you have no choice but to dig it up. Dig up. Right now, you have the ability to jet it out and then you can throw an epoxy liner in there and rehabilitate that line. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead now. Take the camera out, guys. We'll insert our balloon and then we'll start airing everything up. Oh. All right. So Dave's uh, Dave's going up to the roof. We're gonna go ahead and throw the the G Vision camera down the four inch vent. Just see if we get anything. Uh, make sure that everything is kosher there. Go slower now. Go in. Cockroaches. A lot of cockroaches in this line. Keep going. They're sewer cockroaches. This is they they survive in uh, hot, moist areas. Check that out. They're running from Dave. Look at that. Oh. Okay, that's our smoke machine. We're gonna set everything up on the roof and we're gonna access the main four inch vent that's directly above the bathroom here. Yeah, so this right here is gonna prevent the smoke from going down to the city main and out. It uh, keeps everything contained. All right, this is where the fun began. So we've sealed everything off. Let's go to the crawl space. Let's get that little remote control with the camera and follow my brother Jimmy in on this little journey of inspecting the crawl space. Hey buddy, you ready to go under? Let's do it. Got a little smoke here. See the smoke coming out? Look at that. Let's see what that is. You got a little smoke, Jim, I see. Yeah. Right here behind you. Oh, I know what it is. It's a wax seal from the toilet. The toilet's right here, and I can see the smoke coming out of the floor. I see smoke. Jim! I see smoke right here, guys. Look at this. Hey, Jim! I'm getting smoke over here! It's coming out pretty good. Yeah, we want to get under there and see what's going on. I get excited when, when we see smoke like this. It's a, it's a good thing, because it a lot of times solves the mysteries. We got smoke right here, look. Look at this. You see, watch it's out. pouring out. Uh, another wax seal. Wax seal? Yeah. Ah, uh, so it's been about an hour and a half. We're really doing a very thorough inspection of the crawl space. So far, we're not seeing any evidence of any rodent breaches in the sewer line. 
My brother's up to something though, because he's having us run a bunch of water down the kitchen and the drains. I think to verify if there's any leaks underground, maybe boiling up. But right now, not looking too good in respect to pinpointing how they're getting into this crawl space. So let's wait until we finish these tests here and see what Jimmy found underneath the crawl space. Yeah, you can see it's a very slow leak. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot more. Can you just fill the sink up a little bit and then let it run? Thank you. All that food under here. There's a hole in his pipe right here. The old cast iron has a has a hole right there. So maybe he had a clog here and uh, the water just came out of that and filled up this entire thing, especially with those roots out front. So I could see why uh, Ivar, you know, he was seeing the rodents, but also having an odor and was relating the, the rodents to the odor, um, which a lot of people do. But uh, in this case, obviously, it was the sewer, sewer drain uh, leak that was causing this uh, contamination and that odor uh, cross-contaminating into his house. So he should see a big difference here by the end of the day. Have you had a backup recently? No. No? Because you have massive amounts of sewage underneath that front portion of your, of your house, underneath your kitchen. Great. A lot. So where is the break? Is it under the house? Well, I remember when I was having you guys run the water? Yeah. So I see some drips from your kitchen line and I see food like, like white rice or something down below. Yeah. You have thousands of sewer flies under there. So I can tell that this has been going on for some time. When you were describing an odor, did you say you would, would you describe it more towards the front of the house in oh, that yeah. area? Yeah. Okay. Like, or, or, you know, or the side where the bathroom is. Yeah. Okay. But definitely towards the front of the house, yeah. I mean, my wife for, for a couple of years now has been telling me she goes in the kitchen at night, she can smell the sewer yep. coming out of the kitchen. There it is. As far as the rodents, as far as the rodents, I'm not seeing any burrows. There's no, the only thing I can, and I'm not seeing it, the soil with a hole in it, as though they're coming up through the sewer and through that burrow yeah. and then into the crawl space. Um, I'm not seeing any indication. I do see by the dryer vent where they chewed up that foam from the inside. Sure. So you didn't see anywhere under the house where a rat could be getting into that crawl space? No. The only thing I could suspect is, is the area where, um, where you've got massive amounts of sewage water that's over the pipe. Yeah. But I don't see a hole coming through where they would, you know, you would you would see a nice hole that they would be coming in and out of. Right. Okay, so can I assume then that the last rat I saw inside the house, after I had this exterminator here, yeah. got in through the condenser line where the air conditioner is. Yes, was. and then you filled that up. And then I filled it up and they tried to get at it again and then yeah. I put traps down. Well, the good news is, is that we've ruled out all of the plumbing, which was important because you do have the old galvanized uh, system, the old cast iron yeah, that, that, well, that, that, that does corrode and, and, and cause failure. So you have two issues. You have a sewer yeah, infestation really? in the front of your yard, but really the priority, what really needs to get, to get taken care of is dealing with all of that bacteria and sewer flies uh, and the break. Uh, oh, so there is a break in the sewer. Oh, you've got oh, a broken house. sewer pipe underneath the house. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Right where the sewer Right where the sewer line is, here, uh -huh. about, I would say, five feet in where it starts, you have a valley of dirt okay. where the sewer line goes in. In that valley is full is sewage water Great. that's on the soil. And then up by your kitchen, your kitchen from your main here, there's a branch line. It comes up this way. It picks up your kitchen. That's the other word. The bottom of that kitchen line has reached its life its lifespan. There's it's gone. Okay.
So that just shows you right there that, uh, you know, doing a full investigative uh, inspection really reveals a lot in a home. A lot of homeowners just don't know. You're smelling things, especially for two years. Highly recommend if you smell any indication of any type of odor, if you move on it quickly, you're going to uh, mitigate the uh, larger project or larger expense of doing a job. So um, highly recommend that. So we're going to go ahead and start the fogging process now, uh, mitigate the and neutralize the odor. And uh, I think we got it. And wouldn't you guys all agree that my brother needs a new hat? Hey man, it's all part of it, all <laughs> part of it. So there's the, uh, the sewer water there. Kitchen line is going to be replaced there, and then we're going to tie into uh, we're going to tie into that three by two right there. Put proper proper straps. What we're also going to do too is create a better flow because that line it looks pretty flat. So we're going to add some grade to that so we can get a nice nice flow for uh, for Ivor. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and remove maybe three to four inches of soil and bag it. It is a pretty tight crawl space, so uh, we had to cut the shovel handle so we can get a... Hey, do you want me to do my spray right now or who wants to it? Very important when you clean a, cr a crawl space is to take a good two to three inches of soil, especially for two years of seepage, So we'll go ahead and do all of this here, same way all the way across, and then we'll give it a good, good clean with, with our end gun. So what we're going to do is, because it's such a long run from the crawl space all the way to the front here, which is about uh, 30, 40 feet, what we're going to do is we're going to take six mil poly plastic roll it underneath the house and create sort of like a slide and then we'll have a rope and uh, we'll be able to pull the bags out of the crawl space by sliding it over this plastic here so we're going to get that set up right now go ahead the next bag. All right, we're going to start cutting the two inch now, get rid of that old leaky. Oh, can you, uh, let me see the inside of that pipe. Let's take a look at it. Oh yeah, look at that guys. Completely congested. Raise it up if you can. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty compacted right there. So we've got this exposed here. Good thing is, is he's got plastic up to that point right there. So we're going to disconnect that coupling and then cut it here. Hey, Eber, can you turn on the kitchen for me so I can test the uh, drain line? Yep. Thank you. You can hear the water. What's that? Oh, no, I was just talking to, uh, to myself here. We can hear the water, which is good. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, anytime you do a tub drain or kitchen drain, you always want to be able to fill up the, the fixtures and let it drain because that allows a lot of head pressure. A lot of plumbers will just run it 
run the fixture for a little bit, but that is, uh, that's not the way we test. We always like to fill up a tub or fill up a kitchen sink in this case and allow all of that water. And uh, that's really a good leak test. But so far, so good. All right, guys, so pipe is replaced. Yeah, this is an amazing enzyme that we have. Really uh, takes away all of the sewer contamination, the odors, drain flies, so. All right, guys, so here's the old uh, kitchen line. If you come in closer, look at all this right here. Bad, and then inside, let me show you what it looks like inside. A lot of compassion. Look at that right there. Look at how much gunk there is. Just a lot of, lot of buildup and compaction. So what happens? These kitchen lines, all this debris sits on the bottom. It just starts to eat away. And then uh, a lot of our homeowners, what they'll do is they'll add Drano, and that just adds to a lot more deterioration to uh, metallic pipe. So 20 bags of contaminated soil has been completely removed from Ivor's uh, crawl space and uh, our enzyme treatment. So this has been a, a good win for Ivor for sure. Aw, Dave. I think I saved his hat. That's, that's a true bro right there. That's a true bro. That's the thing about our, our uh, calls is that you never know what you're gonna get yourself into. You know, you think you're coming in on a rat call and uh, you're going over all right. of the, all the issues and you discover something completely different. Yeah. So now we're dealing with sewer flies, bacteria, sewage, we've got to extract, sanitize, and repair a broken sewer pipe. And in regards to his rodent call, I think he's in pretty good shape. Really good shape. There's no burrows coming up through the no. foundation. Smoke would have revealed a lot of the uh, entry points if there was a sewage, but uh, that's what's great about our company is that we've really diversified ourselves into, um, because we kind of don't, the way David and I look at things is, look, if there's contamination, we've got all the products, whether it's rodent feces, urine, sewage, we've got the products and the enzymes. In fact, there's a link down below, guys, for our enzymes that attacks rodent urine, that attacks sewage. And then we have the licensing to be able to go underneath the house and remove all of the broken sewage pipes and put everything up to city code. So the customer really gets the benefit of literally one company, especially yeah. in these COVID times. Well, hopefully you like this video. Appreciate all the feedback, all the comments. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. And we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.